It does make an impact. It makes a difference. I'm sure many of you have similar experiences, even just going out soul winning, where people, you knock on their door, an unsaved person, right? But what do they do? They all the time like, man, I, you know what? I'm going to give you credit for going out and doing this. Now, look, we're not doing it to go and get credit. We know that, right? That's, that's not the point. We're not trying to make ourselves look good in that person's eyes. The reason why I'm bringing it up, though, is because that oftentimes does have an impact on these people, and they're going to be way more inclined to actually listen to what you have to say than the phony that they know real well, you know, says one thing. Oh, yeah, they go to church every week, but you should see them on Saturday. You should see them on Monday. You should see them on any other day of the week. Because they're just a hypocrite. God doesn't want a bunch of hypocrites. And I know to some degree everybody's a hypocrite. <coughs> but that's not what we're talking about here. We're not talking about the, the fact that we're all sinners to some degree. It's how we serve the Lord. It ought to be in sincerity and in truth. Verse number 15. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And what a powerful verse this is. What a powerful verse that is. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. There's so many things that we could glean from this. First of all, this is where I said, don't worry, we're going to get back to it, the Calvinism thing. We're not Calvinist. And when I say that we're not Calvinists, I know there's a lot involved in Calvinism. There's a lot of heresy involved in their teachings. But the primary thing that I focus on is the fact that we do have free will. If we don't have the ability to choose, if we don't have the will, will is what you want, a, a choice to make, then how is it that this would even make sense where Joshua says through the Holy Ghost, choose you this day whom you will serve, whom ye will serve. What's your will? Who do you want to serve? Go ahead and serve them. If you don't have a will, then it would be God's will that people choose to serve other gods. Let me say it again, so as you understand. If, if you don't have a will, I mean, it's not your choice, but it's just God's controlling everything like a, a great puppet master and you're on his string, then the people who go off and serve other gods, even after hearing about Jesus Christ, even after hearing about the Bible, it would mean that, well, I mean, they don't really have a will, so then it must be God's will because who else is doing it? But the Bible says that the Lord's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. We know what God's will is. And if God's will is that nobody would go to hell, everybody would be saved. But we know that that's not the case, that there are people going to hell and there are people that aren't saved. <coughs> the only way to reconcile is to say, well, then people must have a will. It's a bottom line. Choose you this day whom you will serve. And there comes a point everybody needs to make that decision. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. And we need to make sure we're doing a good job of presenting that at the door too and get, uh, trying to drive people to make that decision. Joshua's doing that here. He tells them the history. He tells them the story. He tells them how they got to where they're at. Now the choice is up to you. And when we preach the gospel, one thing, I'm not saying anyone's not doing this already, but just don't forget this. We're, we're, we're giving people the information about who Jesus was, about who we are. We're sinners, right? Who Jesus is. Who did he, what did he do for us? Give them the whole plan. Tell them everything. But then we got to nail it down to be like, look, you need to make a decision on this. You need to decide. I know what I believe. But what do you believe? <coughs> don't just put it off. Joshua was demanding of these people, hey, choose you. He didn't say choose you whenever you want. He said, choose you this day. You make the choice today. You've heard the truth. You've seen the examples. Here we are today. Make the decision. Choose. What are you going to choose? You're going to choose life and the Lord, or are you going to choose these, these idols and these false gods 
and the, the pleasures of this world and wickedness and death and hell. Make the choice. It's up to you because God's not going to make the choice for you. You choose whom you will serve. 